This is Copy Bartoli, stage four, and this is Matthew Van Der Poel's first win. Now, you can see it's a pretty hilly course. There's a large climb followed by um, a circuit, well, I guess before and after circuits of a smaller climb. And Van Der Poel is in the break early doors. He had about a long, long way in the break with him and just four other riders. Um, he was pulling really, really strong turns. You can see here, they're all Conti or pro Conti riders. Um, and he obviously is a class above the rest of them. This was actually his first race of the year after the man Sam Raymond, which he finished third in. Now, Van der Poel got in the early break, probably quite wise. He thought no one would chase, but alas, Michigan Scott, or Bike Exchange, sorry, were chasing for Matteo Sobrero. You also had Ineos who were going for Ethan Hater as well, who had some solid results. Um, sorry, actually, Bike Exchange probably going for Dion Smith more than Matteo Sobrero, who can also get a result on stages like this. So here's Van der Poel still pulling very strong. There's no kilometers to go on this, but he was in the break for well over 70 kilometers uh, and he was, you know, looking pretty pretty good um, in comparison to everyone else. I mean, obviously for him, this is mainly a training race, but I think it's interesting to see like how strong he was even very early on in the season, uh, which was coming back after his back injuries post Rio Olympics and getting back into condition. He's now in Lavinia altitude just before the 2022 Tour de France, uh, and it'll be interesting to see how he goes. And again, you can see him on the front when he's pulling. The guys behind him are looking really battered. They don't want to pull a turn, um, as well as the fact that he's pulling significantly longer turns. So towards the end, um, this is actually the last climb. He decides it's time to go, puts in a big attack, and you can see like he's on a different level to everyone else. Everyone else is absolutely battered. There's no chance they're getting back to him. Like they try, but you know it's game over. But Van der Poel knows you know he's got a little bit left in the tank, and he wants to make sure he gets over the top of the climb. Um, or as far up the climb as possible without getting caught because he knows that behind there's going to be attacks uh, and he might not be able to follow. So you can see it's sort of all blocked across the road, but still pretty hard. Nibali is now getting on the front for a start. This was also, I think, pretty sure his race, Mara Schmidt was chasing, along with some of the riders from the Israel Premier Tech team, um, who also set quite a hard pace as well. You can see Garrett Thomas is looking after Eddie Dunbar, who's in the leader's jersey further back, um, as well as Ethan Hayter, who's... Also in the bunch. Um, Van der Poel then actually managed to get caught on the descent, which is good for him. It allows him to sort of rest up. And there are some counterattacks coming across as well here, um, including riders from Trek. I think this could be Gianluca Brambilla, but don't quote me on that. I'm not 100% sure. Um, and then you also have Mauro Schmidt further behind, who was attacking a lot. He um, managed to w uh, win the first stage ahead of Eddie Dunbar um, and was, I guess, in the lead after that before losing it towards Eddie Dunbar. We can see Van der Poel is just taking his descent quite chill. This was Schmidt um, attacking um, alongside the riders from the Italian national team. And now we're just going to go straight in basically for the run-in. You can see, again, Ineos trying to control this, trying to look after it for Ethan Hayter. He was probably, you know, as well as uh, Van der Poel, the real big favourite. Remy Cavani was launching off the front, which is a good move because there's not too many people in the bunch that could really control it. Ineos have been doing a lot, but here we go. Uh, Cavani decides it's time to go. It looks like he's almost leading them out, which he isn't. Um, but Ethan Hayter is now second wheel in, you know, quite far up, to be honest. Probably not where he wants to be. Uh, but alas, you know, it's better than nothing. He, he, you know, he has to... He has to do the best he can in this situation with a smaller team because it was such a selective and healy race. The only people who really have a bit of a lead out is bike exchange on the Brian side of the road. You can see Van der Poel is a little bit further back on Mick of uh, Van Dyke's wheel, who is sort of a, a strong Conti sprinter who's now moved up to the World Tour team. Um, and he, again, um, is probably a good wheel to follow. Hater's now on the front here. He's going to look around and be like, I don't want to be on the front. Anyone else want to take over? But through these technical sections, it's not actually too bad being on the front. You sort of save energy. And then he decides that it's time to go quite early. Um, and the sprint actually kicks off super early with Bike Exchange leading it out for Dion Smith before Van der Poel comes. And he must be knackered because he's been in the break all day. And watch it on the right-hand side of the road. He's in the slipstream. Hater has gone so early. And when Van der Poel comes past him, it's just not really fair. Like the the sprint he can do after being so tired and batter hater, who's a very good sprinter, is um pretty impressive. We're gonna watch this again in more of a slow mo. Um, but I think the biggest thing was just hater going too early. His positioning was just far far too, um too far forward and hate. And then Vanderpool came round with so much more speed. So anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you enjoy this little quick recap uh, on Vanderpool's first uh, win of twenty twenty two, which you probably haven't seen. Um, and I look forward to see how he does at the tour.